Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer here on this beautiful Saturday. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and Alleluia. And now together, the Benite, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 75 in unison. We give you thanks, O God, we give you thanks, calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. I will appoint a time, says God, I will judge with equity. Though the earth and all its inhabitants are quaking, I will make its pillars fast. I will say to the boasters, boast no more, and to the wicked, do not toss your horns, do not toss your horns so high, nor speak with a proud neck. For judgment is neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. It is God who judges, he puts down one and lifts up another. For in the Lord's hand there is a cup full of spiced and foaming wine, which he pours out, and all the wicked of the earth shall drink and drain the dregs. But I will joy rejoice forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. He shall break off all the horns of the wicked, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We will continue now with Psalm 76. In Judah is God known, his name is great in Israel. At Salim is his tabernacle, and his dwelling is in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of battle. How glorious you are, more splendid than the everlasting mountains. The strong of heart have been despoiled, they sink into deep. None of the warriors can lift a hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and rider lie stunned. What terror you inspired! Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounce judgment. The earth was afraid and was still. When God rose up to judgment and to save all the oppressed of the earth, Truly, wrathful Edom will give you thanks, and the remnant of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all around him bring gifts to him who are worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Esther. Now there was a Jew in the citadel of Tzuza, whose name was Mordecai, son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjaminite. Kish had been carried away with Jerusalem from the captives, carried away with King Jeconiah of Judah, whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had carried away. Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his cousin, for she had neither father nor mother. The girl was fair and beautiful, and when her father and her mother died, Mordecai adopted her as his own daughter. So when the king's order and his edict were proclaimed, and when many young women were gathered in the citadel of Susa in custody of Haggai, Esther was also taken into the king's palace and put in custody of Haggai, who was in charge of the women. When the turn came for, the daughter, for Esther, daughter of Abihel and the uncle of Mordecai, who had adopted her as his own daughter, to go in to the king, she asked for nothing except what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who had charge of the women, advised. Now Esther was admired by all who saw her. 
When Esther was taken into King Ahasuerus in his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign, the king loved Esther more than all the other women of all the virgins. She won his favor and devotion, so and that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king gave a great banquet to all his officials and ministers, Esther's banquet. He also granted a holiday to the provinces and gave gifts with royal liberty. When the virgins were being gathered together, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Now Esther had not revealed her kindred or her people as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther obeyed Mordecai just as when she was brought up by him. In those days, while Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, who guarded the threshold, became angry and conspired and to assassinate King Asahurus. But the matter came to the knowledge of Mordecai, and he told it to Queen Esther, and Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. When the affair was investigated and found to be so, both men were hanged on the gallows. It, it was recorded in the book of the annals in the presence of the king. Here ends the reading. Our first canticle this morning is, since it's Saturday, is Benedicite Omnia Opera Domini, the song of the three young men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <clears throat> some say. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. For the cosmic order. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens. Sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat. Summer and winter glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever for the earth and its creatures. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that moves in the waters. All birds of the air glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. For the people of God, let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also, some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? And others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, 
does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. For one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are of his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we should not all think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius the Arapagite and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Here ends the reading. Our next canticle is the Song of the Redeemed, Magna et Mirabilia. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Your let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now collect for Saturdays. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, Grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for mission. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, <coughs> excuse me, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now bring our own needs 
and intentions before the Lord and ask for his indulgence, his mercy, and in many cases, his forgiveness. Lord, hear our prayer. Now the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your weekend. God bless you. Join us uh, tomorrow uh, at 9.30 at Christ Episcopal Church or at 11 o'clock at uh, Calvary Episcopal Church on our Facebook and or our YouTube channels. God bless you. Thank you. Remember to leave the world a better place this evening than you found it this morning.